Hi guys, it's Renisti back again with another FHM video. This time we are now in season seven. Holy crap, we've come that far in the rise of Barry McCockiner. And he's entering his first ever draft in this series. You might think, well, seven seasons, where was he to start? If this is your first video watching this series, first of all, welcome. Second, I'll give you a little recap. He spent a couple years in Toledo and... Obviously, the ECHL doesn't have a draft. Then he spent three years with the Nico Ice Bucks in the ALAH, which, again, doesn't have a draft. Scout and sign the best players you can, and eventually the smartest GMs win the championship. And that's why Barry won a championship in his second season. He made good signings. Having said that, eventually the asking prices for the team as a whole ballooned, and the long-term outlook was that if you wanted to keep the same core together, it was going to cost a lot more money than what was in the budget. And, you know, Masajiri Yoshi, God bless him, you know, he can't turn water into wine and neither could Barry. So he agreed to step down at the end of his third season, at the end of season five of this series. And in season six, he tried the Western Hockey League. And ownership was led to believe that this was a contending team. Our own pick in this year's Bantam Draft is second overall. And we've traded for the first overall pick from the Medicine Hat Tigers, unless there's a Western Hockey League lottery. I don't even know if that's in the game yet. And we've traded for the third overall pick from the Regina Pats. How did we get those, you might ask? We literally just shopped two OAs. I don't know how that even happened, but it did. So, without further ado, we are going to advance to season number seven of Barry's career, before I do that, I'll mention one last time. We are going to probably be joining a new country in terms of international teams because he got relegated with Lithuania at the Division 1A Worlds in Tallinn. It was a complete joke of a tournament. They blew it. So he has every right to get the axe. That said, let's move on. All right, we are here. I am curious, though. Do we have any mail? It would not appear that is the case. Um, We have a trade proposal that I'm not even going to look. It's just no. Let's see. So the Vancouver Giants. We did. What? We didn't get fired from Lithuania? Wow. I stand corrected. Hmm. I was fully expecting to get the boot. Okay. All right. So we're going to release a few guys to make way for some guys on our protected list. So Brandon Rich, I'm sorry. You're gone. Andrew Alessio. Yeah. No, you're gone, buddy. I'm sorry. Not your fault. You're just not WHL standard for the time being. Holden Sexsmith, I might just try and trade your rights. Before we go on more of a tirade, if you will, we're going to... Make sure the Giants make as much money as possible. So we're going to raise ticket to $47. Holy smokes. That's what Habs nosebleeds cost in 2024. Actually, they're a bit more, but very high wage budget. Why the hell not? Raise development by three. Hell yeah. For 18 points. Very heavy market spending. Um, Yeah. Why not? Monthly. We'll just keep it as is. So take a look at our depth chart. So Tanner Musel is actually, on paper, our best goalie, according to this. So I'm going to try and sign him. He's eligible for a junior contract. Here we go. Uh, he's pretty good at the, dealing with low shots. Matt Baldwin is okay all around. Yeah, so for the time being, it might be shocking, but... Despite the fact he played 45 games for us last year, Matt Baldwin, at the very least, you're going down to the Pacific Junior Hockey League, and we might buy you out. So Casey Little is actually a WHL caliber stay-at-home defenseman, only just. We're going to move Scott Vienno to the Pacific Junior League for the moment. Stephen Kemble, he looks like he could be all right. But the thing is, I don't know. We obviously don't want to be a genuine lottery team again, but if the import draft does not treat us well this year, 
we could bring him in. All right, so we are going to try and go after Tracy Pavlik, who is a three and a half star, five star potential forward. Hell yes. And just like that, we have a very, very good goal scoring option on the Vancouver Giants, who is also a rather big boy. That's just wonderful. The Tanner Musil scouting report. The strongest part of his game is his intangibles. Where have we heard that before? Some parts of Musil's games are better than others, but he's not particularly good at anything. Musil is made out of glass. <laughs> Sneeze near him and he'll be out day to day. <laughs> he has no tolerance for change. He has a tendency to disappear when the pressure is on. All right, we're going to put you in the Pacific Junior League as well with Baldwin. And we're going to ride the Mark Hope Wolf Frame tandem. We're going to try and sign Scott McCatchen in the place of McKnight. We'll see if he actually is a better player than McKnight. Only just. All right, so after the signing, our annual budget's doing all the stuff that we need to take care of on July 1st. Let's sim the Western Hockey League Draft Lottery. Here we go. So there it is. The U.S. Prospects Draft picks number one, two, and three belong to the Vancouver Giants. Now, before we get onto our Western Hockey League Bantam draft, we have a U.S. draft to select what I hope are American players that will play for us. The draft order is as follows. Obviously, that thing that we read off, it applies to the Western Hockey League Bantam draft. I don't believe that the league allows you to trade for American draft picks. That said, the Medicine Hat Tigers are proud to select, my guess is this Tim McMahon kid, am I right? Oh, it took Brennan Schultz. We're up on the board now. And I'm sorry. What? Six foot two, 133 pounds. Are you built like a feather, dude? I can't believe that's actually, there's no way. Is this guy see-through? Well, let's take a look at his scouting report at the very least. Oh, no info available. That's not great. Yeah, he's predicted to be number one. He's playing for the San Jose Junior Sharks, according to that logo, because I did the FHM logo pack. I'll leave a link to that, actually, in the description if you guys want to download it for your FHM 10 game. And I will be editing said logo pack for the eventual release of FHM 11. I'll obviously have to make some tweaks and all that, because there's going to be a couple new leagues. There's going to be a couple, you know, rebrands, whatever. I'll figure it out, but... It'll be done. Like Robbie Hammond here, right? 14 years old, 6'1", 167. Still huge for a 14-year-old. But my God, man, 133. Then again, though, this McMahon kid seems to be legit. And if he fills out, oh boy, he could be a monster. With the second overall pick in the Western Hockey League U.S. Prospects Draft, the Vancouver Giants are proud to select from the San Jose Junior Sharks. Tim McMahon. All right, so we are on to the second round now, and this guy is playing the wrong sport. Six foot six at 15 years old. Dude, go in the end. Go, like, you still have time. Go play high school basketball, bro. Ed Lowney. He's frail, which is not that great. He enjoys the spotlight, and his performance reflects that. That's actually kind of interesting. He gets along with everyone, and he can be counted on to avoid dwelling on his failures. With the 24th overall pick in the U.S. Prospects Draft, Vancouver selects Ed Lowney. And there we go. That's the end of the Prospects Draft. I believe a few teams just didn't use their second-round picks. But now we move on to the Mantum Draft. So here we are. The Western Hockey League Draft. The draft order. We take each of the top three picks with the very first... WHL Bantam draft of Barry's career and his first overall pick. The Vancouver Giants are proud to select. You knew it was coming. From the Western Canada Hockey Academy Center, David Polinski. Let's go, baby. We got him. But we're not done. Not even close. So with pick number two, let's take a look at uh, Mitch John a bit closer because as of right now, He's who I'm leaning towards, but I want to just take one last look at him. John is a little worse in terms of overall skill than Jim Reed. He'd be a fringe player on most teams in our league right now. He's unlikely to ever reach the current skill level of Ollie Walrus. He has the potential to become a top player in our league. 
He doesn't belong in the league he's currently in. We don't have a player similar to John on our team right now. The strongest part of his game is his intangibles. He's a very strong player. The weakest part of his game is his physical play. That's rather ironic. He seems to be rather prone to injuries. He's vulnerable below the waist and in his arms. He always handles criticism in a constructive manner, which is a good thing. He's noted for his intelligence. He's one of the brightest people you ever meet. He's a bit prone to controversy. Tyler Dawkins. I don't recall ever looking at you, so let's let's see how good you could be. He looks like he'll develop well beyond Ryder Dunn's current skill level, which is fantastic. He has the potential to become a top player in our league. Also fantastic. He's in way over his head over in his league. So that means he's too good for it? I don't get it. So that means he's way, way better than Mitch John right now. His size is just the smallest of question marks, but considering how good his upside is, I might be willing to look past it and actually consider taking him. He has been the subject of more a few opponents' complaints about cheap shots. Oh, good lord, that is not good. We don't want a guy getting suspended in you know big games. He can be counted on to the to avoid dwelling on his failures, which is good. He takes his success in stride and doesn't let himself get complacent. Okay, so let's go back. As of right now, we're gonna make a priority list. We'll make Dawkin number two. Ryu, I remember looking at him a while ago. Evan Bean, I'm gonna take another look at. Mortensen, I'm not touching with a 10-foot barge pole, so you can forget that. Calgary, you can take him, I don't care. Brody Newman, you're definitely in consideration. All right, so another addition to our potential draftees, and I've looked it over. If it comes down to a defenseman that we're taking, I mean, we have the next two picks. You know, we control 100% of our fate here. So there's not like there's a, you know, we have to hope that X players on th off the board or on the board, you get the idea. So when I looked at Bean one more time, I realized he was docking, but a lot better, better size, more WHL ready, and just a better player overall. So the stats might not have shown it, but yeah, if we take a defenseman, it's Evan Bean. Docking, you're gone. We're not taking you with either the second or third overall pick. I do have an idea of who we're going to take, though. So... Of course, because I was so excited about taking the first overall pick or making the pick, I forgot to congratulate the Edmonton Oil Kings on their Western Hockey League championship. Having said that, with the second overall pick, the Vancouver Giants are proud to select from Saskatchewan's U18 program, Brody Newman. There is Mitch John, and there's no doubt he goes at number four if we don't take him. And he's a good center. He could be another great option behind Polinski, but the thing is, we also have to look forward to next year and the year after that. We have to. We can't just stack up a whole bunch of guys from one draft class because eventually, when they all become either NHL eligible or, you know, when they become OAs, they're all going to leave at the same time, and then there's going to be this big gaping hole that's going to be rather hard to rebuild if we just have a bunch of guys who are barely developed or not even adequate to play in the position. So I did a lot of thinking, and this was a very very tough choice to make. But two guys are going to be going to different teams today out of the three that we narrowed it down to. So, with that said, the Vancouver Giants are proud to select with their third overall pick from the Western Canadian Hockey Academy, Evan Bean. We've got some good players, so let's see what the rest of the top ten looks like. Calgary has the next pick. Seattle's after them. Then it's Wenatchee. Tri-City, Prince George, Brandon, and Kelowna. So I'm assuming if the Calgary hitmen have any sort of, I guess, reliable scouting department, they're going to take Mitch John. Whoa, okay. They did their research just like us. So Mitch John is slipping. He was supposed to go second round, and we nearly picked him. So Seattle Thunderbirds, who do they take? They took Dalton Mortensen. Wow. Okay. So Mitch John is out of the top five. Surely Wenatchee takes him. Oh my god. 
Wenatchee takes Peter Holloway. All right, Tri-City's on the clock. Do they take Mitch John? No. Oh, my God. They take Matthew Stiverney. Jesus. He's someone that I don't even recall looking at myself, but he looks like he has really good upside. So eighth overall. Does Mitch John go to the Prince George Cougars? Finally, he goes. Eighth overall, Mitch John is selected by the Prince George Cougars. Wow. And he was supposed to go number one. He was ranked number one by our scouts for the last couple months of the year, probably even before that too. But yeah, Mitch John finally goes. So just because I said we're going to watch the rest of the top 10, we will watch the rest of the top 10. We'll take a brief look through the first round, and then we'll make the rest of our picks slowly. Luca Shen goes to the Brandon Wheat Kings. Is he any good? Ooh. So our guys think he's going to be really good, but the consensus is that he might be a bit of a bust at ninth overall. Holy smokes. He's supposed to go number 79? All right, and the Kelowna Rockets, do they take Hefferman? They take Daniel Crashley from the Winnipeg Wild. Let's simulate to our next pick. So who went where? So Dawkins went to Prince Albert. Shane Bowen, Mark Stein, Luke Duhame, Tyler Denny, Andre Hoyles goes to Brandon as well. They had multiple first rounders this year. Jordan May, Braden Dalgleish. I'm a Newcastle fan. The name Dalgleish is uh, it's, it's a dark one. Zach Wesley, Pat Bowden's. And Mike Hefferman was the first goalie off the board going to Prince Albert. Another team with multiple first-round picks this year. So, the best options are looking to be goalies. But once again, we're not taking a goalie this high. The Vancouver Giants are proud to select with their second-round pick. Spencer Dupuy. So, this Nick Rube is still on the board. 6'4", 169 at 15 years old is not bad at all. All right, so I'm looking at this kid, Daniel Karikari, and we're taking it with our third-round pick. All right, so... This could be a miss, but it's a real boomer bust. And then against fourth round, so it's not overly important if he just doesn't pan out. But we're going to take Riley Oramasionwu with our fourth round pick. All right, so with our fifth round pick, we're going to take this kid from Alberta's U18 program, Kendall McDonald. And just because I don't want to bore you guys with the rest of the draft, I will do my best to make as good of of a next 10 selections as possible if we even use all 10 of those picks because in the western hockey league you don't have to pick all 15 rounds i'll just fast forward to the import draft so this is interesting and uh, obviously the prospects review reveals that we took polinski newman and bean number one two and three overall but we were not in the best drafts category, probably just because we didn't take that many guys. We stopped after the sixth round because I don't believe we need that many guys in our protected list at once. But we're picking fourth overall in the CHL import draft, only behind Medicine Hat, of course, Sault Ste. Marie, and Moncton. Second round, we're picking 64th overall behind the three aforementioned teams. So Medicine Hat takes... Anton Nyberg, Sault Ste. Marie takes. Valtteri Kaliosari, Moncton takes. Andre Kukla, nice. All our scouts are suggesting that we take Philip Fate, but I'm leaning towards Pavel Vanek. I don't know. Yeah, anything scouting-wise, he's durable. No idea whether or not he's controversial or anything. Philip fight. He can show a bit of a mean streak. Hmm. He could turn out to be better than Ollie Walrus. Oh boy. There's very few forwards we've seen who actually has that potential. So his starting ability is gonna be really bad for the time being. Although Pavel Vanek to me is very enticing. I don't know. Cause he'll be with us for a while. He'll see he's only 16. Alright, looking at our depth chart, I realize that our centers are gonna be changing a lot in the next couple of years. And we want someone who's going to be there for a while. So believe it or not, I'm going with our scout suggestions that have my own. And I'm going to take Philip Fight fourth overall. All right. So with our second round pick in the import draft, we're taking Philip Husnik. Let's try and get Philip Fight on board. All right. He's able to sign. That's a good thing. 
Yeah, I have a feeling he'll rapidly develop, but I really hope our scouts do not botch this pick because if Pavel Vanek ends up being a superstar in the Western Hockey League and this guy flops, oh, there's going to be a lot of guys getting fired. Let's try and sign this Philip Hushnik kid. Hopefully he ends up panning out. Yep, we might have blown that pick. Let's try and see if we can pick up this Anton Carlson kid while this Czechian kid develops because he does not look good to start with. Oh, baby, now we're talking. That's an import defenseman. Who is Nick? <sighs> I'm going to send that guy to the moon, man. This guy is our future. It could be interpreted as a stupid decision, but for now, I'm going to send him down to Junior B so he develops a bit more, gets used to you know North American ice, whatever. And then once we bring him up, he'll have some reps in, in North American ice. And hopefully his development will have progressed quite a bit by then. You know, let's say shooting accuracy goes up or screening, getting open, whatever. Because let's say in three years' time, if he's still there, if we're still in Vancouver, that is, he could be a hell of a player for us. But right now is not that time. All right, so for the time being, this is what our lineup will look like heading to preseason, our optimal lineup. I think these lines could actually work well together and not make a run, but... I don't see how we're going to miss playoffs this time around. Unless, of course, a whole bunch of guys get signed and that screws our whole season completely. Oh, baby. We got Holden Sexsmith back. Even though he was in the NHL all of last year. What sense does that make? Now that is a good team. I know it might sound crazy saying that, but our defense has not looked this good since we got here. At any point since Barry joined the Western Hockey League. Great. This guy involved an off-ice incident, but thankfully no one is truly pissed off within the team about it. So we'll sweep it under the rug, but don't do it again. Oh my god, Nathan, what did you do? You pissed off Gingra, Hope, James, Corbett, and Quarantin. You pissed off half the defensemen in this team, bro. Or a third of them, whatever. The Hall of Fame class for 2029. I don't know why his picture is messed up like that, but it's Kovalev, Yager, Ryan Suter, and Mark andre Fleury. Another one. <laughs> oh my God, dude. What are you doing, Nathan? I don't want to have to trade you, but what the hell, man? And the thing is, it's not even showing that, oh yeah, he's controversial, da -da -da. he enjoys a spotlight and his performance reflects that, sure. His way of handling criticism is constructive, which is a good thing, and it's in it for the money. Should be a good thing. Something I completely forgot to look at. Who out of our guys was drafted in the National Hockey League? One of our national team guys was picked by the Ottawa Senators, Thomas Saudis. The first Lithuanian in I don't even know how many years. We finally have a Lithuanian draft in the NHL. Nice. Oh, Anton Carlson was drafted by the Vegas Golden Knights. The third round. Nice. So no one else from the Vancouver Giants, the actual team, was selected. Just Anton Carlson. So I hired a bunch of scouts because I think that our scouting network does need to grow in terms of knowing our own prospects in our backyard in British Columbia, even Alberta, Saskatchewan, all the Western Canada stuff. We need to know them better and the European guys. I even hired a Lithuanian guy for Christ's sakes. And is that biased? Sure. But I also did hire a Swede, a Czechian, a couple Americans, a Slovak, a Russian, and a Swede. And this Thai guy was already there. I don't know what exactly he brings to the table, but my guess is that he has a lot of air miles. All right, we're going to rock with our best potential lineup in our first game of the preseason against Swift Current. Let's do this. A shootout loss is not a great way to start, but we did pepper them with shots, so hopefully we can actually make some progress this season because, listen, if Duguay gets mad after this season, sure, Polensky, Newman, and Bean can't play right away, but at the same time, sign Carlson. We got our imports. We have to have made some progress. On top of our young guys already developing more. To surprise of nobody, I am naming our current alternate number two, Ryder Dunn, the next captain of the Vancouver Giants. Rami Borowski, you will be an A1. And Sexsmith, I'll make you the A2, but for the love of God, don't do anything stupid. John James is out with an injury. Shin splints. Corey Izeroff, 
Here in the lineup, bud. Are we playing against the Red Deer Rebels? Let's smash these boys. <laughs> this is not happening! Next game, we're at home against the Prince Albert Raiders. This is still preseason, so it technically doesn't matter. But come on, guys. Do something. There we go. 4-2 win. Finally. Hopefully, this is going to give the guys a feeling of, you know what? We are better than this. And Pavlich. Wow. And we have a wave of guys getting invited to camps. So Tracy Pavlik, along with Olfert, Gingra, Dunn, and Carlson all get invited to their camps. Defense looks a bit weaker, but I doubt this is what it'll actually be like in the regular season. So if we lose this one, I'm not going to be too fussed. Yeah, we get blanked, but again, not surprised. All right, so we're going to put Casey Little in the lineup for the first time in the Vancouver Giants uniform. Oh, narrow loss, 3-2. Okay. All right, here we go, man. The training camp development report. I don't remember if we got one last year, but Kendall McDonald... Got better in five different stats. William Dean. Have yourself a training camp. Is that eight? Eight improvements across the board. Anthony Tillman playing Dubuque of the USHL. Interesting. Andre Hamilton getting better in another eight categories. Ed Lowney getting better in another eight categories. One of our US guys who... We might release if he doesn't end up working out, even though you're built like a 18-wheeler. Philip Fight, speed plus two. See, this is why I sent him down. We're going to call him up at some point during the season. He's not going to spend the whole time there. He's already at one star. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, he's going to tear it up for, let's say, first couple weeks of the season, and we'll give him a shot in the big league. Ryan McKay as well. Getting a lot better. Jesus. Scott McKnight. I mean, sure, but we're not using you unless one of our OAs gets hurt. And even then, I don't know if we're legally allowed to call you up. So, Tanner Musel. Getting better. Future star of the Vancouver Giants right here. Scott Vienno. Really coming into his own as a defenseman. Now this. Brody Newman. Nine improvements. Nine Acceleration, balance, fighting, team player, getting open, puck handling, face-offs, positioning, stick checking, plus one. Thank you for coming. Oh, yeah. He's definitely going to play in the Western Hockey League next year. No doubt about it. Arama Sionwu, about five improvements. Dylan Jones with six. He was our sixth-round pick that we took as our last selection in the draft. Gangra getting better. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, there you go. Two improvements, but we'll see. Jason Ames. Getting a lot better. Plus two in leadership. Future guy with the letter in a sweater. Potentially. Nathan Casola getting a lot better. That's always good. So eight improvements for Mark Koble. Scott McEachin. I guess I can call him that. Plus three across the board. Daniel Corrington. Nine improvements as well. My God. So Jim Reed gets better in seven different stats. Will Rickman gets better in another eight. But hitting gets up by two. Holden Sexsmith goes up by four. Numerous plus two improvements to Will Stotts. Yeah, this guy is going to be a hell of a depth forward for us. Tenchioko gets better in seven categories. Williams gets better in six. Wolfram gets better in five. Carlson. Oh, my God. Danny Stitt. Another eight. Evan Bean, have yourself a training camp. Holy smokes. Nine improvements across the board, two of which are plus two. Yeah, you're playing the Western Hockey League next year, dude. Spencer Dupuis gets better by six. Kari Kari gets better by five. And David Polensky, how are you doing? Plus one. Acceleration, agility, fighting, bravery, puck handling, shooting accuracy, shooting range, and face-offs. And Tim McMahon, our first round pick in the U.S. draft. Finally, after one hell of a development report, we're going to play against the Portland Winterhawks. Let's see how this goes. Oh, lordy lord. Maybe it's going to take a bit longer than I wanted to shake off those bad habits. He went from being a 7 rated to counterattacking forward when I first signed him to now he's rated 9. Oh, you know what? Maybe I was a bit quick to judge our scouting team. This might be a slam dunk of a pick. I'm going to put him in. Let's see how he does in his first game. Albeit preseason, but it's still his first game. Of course, he gets the first goal of the game for the Giants, man. Philip Fight, could you be our first true FHM legend? Because Easton Armstrong, Arn Kvern, you know, those guys were were up there. But Philip Fight, man, he could be something special. Trey Augustine was up there too. 
Kalinikov was up there too. We had some good ones. Even Oren Santazo during that playoff run we had in Toledo. Definite cult heroes here. So the WHL season preview, Victoria is the favorite. Prince Albert Raiders are second favorites, as are the Everett Silvertips coming off a Mem Cup championship. And Red Deer is a possible challenger, although their weaknesses are in more positions than one. The North Bay Battalion will host the 2030 Memorial Cup. Cool. Mark Hope wants to change the number to number one. You know what? I, I gave you a bit of the rookie treatment with the number 69, but fine and finally after three drafts this is probably gonna be the longest episode i've put out to date but it was one of my favorite to film just because there was so much going on there's a genuine feel of transition heading into the season you know with nico it was like oh let's hope we sign the right foreigners or let's hope we keep him around. With Toledo, it's let's hope to God that Eiserman doesn't shaft us from the virtual gaming pyramid, I guess. But this feels different. We're building our own legacy here. And it's going to start with next episode. That's it. That's all, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy this content, please remember to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the regular season.